Over the past few days, we've been looking at how Swift GPI has become the new world standard in cross-border payments, benefiting banks and their end clients. Now we want to look at how corporates, key bank clients actually, are already grasping the benefits from GPI. Big and small businesses can use GPI to trace their payments until credited with their supplier to gain visibility on key incoming international funds and to enhance operational e efficiency. Joining me now to discuss this in more detail are Peter Klaus Landy, Executive Treasury Operations at Industry Initiatives at General Electric. Uh, Eddie Jacques Mott, Manager, Cash and Bank, Head of Bank Office Administration at Borealis, and Sebastian Rojas, Head of GPI for Corporates at Swift. Gentlemen, welcome all to Cybos TV. I'll start with you, Seb, if I may. You're heading up GPI for Corporates. Aren't corporates already enjoying the benefits of GPI? And, and what does GPI for Corporates then cover? Yeah, exactly. Um, you said it right. You, um, GPI for Corporates is the extension of GPI. So today we have a very strong adoption of GPI. Exactly more than 600 banks are already offering this service. And when a bank is activating GPI, basically their end clients are having the transparency, the speed, the visibility uh, on the, on the cross-border payments. What GPI for corporates is bringing is bringing a standardization between uh, corporate to bank transactions, ensuring that corporates have the same experience regardless the bank that they're operating with. So more exactly, if you, if you look at large organizations like GE, or Borealis, what they do is they integrate that in their back office systems. So when they do payments directly from their treasury management systems, ERP systems, they have exactly the same experience regardless the bank that they're operating with. Peter, how difficult is it to work with multiple banks uh, when it comes to cross-border payments? Yeah, so um, for GE at least, we're a large multinational uh, corporation based in over 170 countries, and we do a business in a lot of challenging markets, right? So it really varies by uh, country by country. But I would say it would be uh, a few things. Uh, first being standards that aren't necessarily standard. So we may deal with banks um, and multiple banks within the same country and based on their own interpretation of either regulations or country specific requirements, um, they need to manage their own internal risk, right? So that poses a challenge from a corporate perspective because they have their own flavor of what standards actually are in that case. And then another point I would say is inc inconsistency around bank fees. Um, so when you look at it across the board, you could be dealing with multiple banks in the same country, um, and you could be sending the same payment from point A to point B, um, and one bank may charge you one set of fees and another bank may charge another set of fees. Uh, the last point I would probably mention is around um, case management or, or inquiry management at the bank, right? Um, a lot of the challenges that we see in the space, especially with cross borders, is we're forced to call up our banking partners to inquire around status of payments, uh, you know, where the actual payment is, is there additional documentation required, uh, is, there, is it held for currency controls or compliance purpose? So, so I mean, it, it, from, from that perspective, it, it definitely could be a challenge. Seb, if my understanding's correct, the first specific service for corporates, branded GPI, pay and trace, was, was recently launched. Are corporates already taking advantage of it, though? Yeah, precisely. So pay and trace is our very first, I will call it a capability of GPI for corporates. It's helping corporates to be able to initiate payments with every single bank they're operating with and being able to receive statuses of those payments, being able to track and trace the payment and get a confirmation of credit. We launched the, this initial capability of this initial service just in July uh, this year. And we have more than 50 uh, corporates and banks that are already part of it. We are very excited about the rest of the year because we have a strong pipeline of banks and corporates that are starting to implement and to enable GPI capabilities in their back office. What about the, uh, the first benefits then, Eddie? The first benefits that your treasury team has unlocked? Well, I think for us what was very important is, is to have traceability, to have feasibility. I mean, before actually it was a bit, you were sending out a payment and uh, yeah, it was a bit like a black box actually. You, you really didn't know what, what, what was happening actually. By having this in place the GPI actually for corporates, we see clearly with the UTR number, which is a un unique reference, that with that reference you get, you can follow actually the complete chain and where your payment is and as well uh, when, it, when it returns actually. So traceability, visibility, and of course, uh, getting more and more important in today's world is, is the speed, actually. So that uh, there is a big, big improvement compared to, to the past, actually. So that the things are going quicker, actually, and that the payment is quicker, actually, at the beneficiary bank where, where you would like to, to have it. 
Have you found this uh, yourself, Peter? What have been the key gains for you in GE? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot of the same that Eddie already mentioned, right? I think speed, and not only speed, but certainty into the transaction. Uh, we've been able to uh, reap that benefit a little bit more, right? So payments that we've seen take a day or longer will not, or are now being seen within the 24-hour uh, the SLA, and some payments even faster than that within an hour or less. So it's definitely a big benefit for us. Um, the other things that we're seeing is around the, the visibility and the transparency. Um, as well, so being able to trace the, the entire transaction lifecycle from origination through beneficiary credit is definitely a big uh, positive for us. And then the last thing I would probably mention there is around um, analytics. So I think as we continue to onboard our banks and we continue to scale up, um, we'll look for additional data insights um, that GP, GPI can provide us, right? So being able to look across at all of this data, look at the fees being charged, and then maybe have more proactive conversations with our bank around least cost routing solutions and things like that. Seb, let's talk development. When you were developing the service, how did you include the corporates and their requirements within that development? I think the, the whole story of, of GPI is being based in co-creation and in community uh, engagement. If you think about GPI itself was born with banks asking SWIFT to find a solution for the whole community to improve cross-border payments. So what we wanted to do with GPI for corporates was uh, extend that and bring corporates in the room, right, to uh, create a mixed working group with corporates and banks, creating, uh, I would say co-creating and designing the solution. Among this group, uh, Peter and Eddie were actively engaged, and this is probably why we can say that the, the, the first capability pay and trace has already 50 customers live. It's just simply co-creation, engagement with the community, ensuring that all requirements are on the table. Eddie, as Seb has alluded to, you were one of the co-creators and early adopters of the service. Uh, can you tell us more on your experience throughout this, this co-creation journey, this collaboration? Well, uh, for me, it has been a very interesting journey, and uh, I think that uh, Sebastian has been doing a very good job, actually. Uh, you, you need to imagine, actually, you put corporates and banks together in one room, and you need to find a standard and a way of working, actually. Uh, but actually, that, that's what we did, actually, and uh, we need to say as well, uh, quite fast, actually, there was an agreement on what we want, actually, and we were on the same line. Uh, so the journey was really very good for us, and we really saw a lot of, let's say, the benefits which we wanted as a corporate, that banks actually were buying that, actually. And a bit later, at a later stage, uh, we integrated as well the, the vendors, because, of course, you need as well to have the vendors on board, actually. So again, uh, the, whole, the whole group together was, was, uh, was excellent, actually, and a good, good way of, of working together and finding a standard which is important in our industry. Mm -hmm. Seb, additional services for corporates mm -hmm. are being worked on, of course. Uh, what's, what's coming up next? What can you tell us? Yeah, we, we talk about the payment initiation. So corporates sending payments, knowing where the payment is, and most importantly, knowing where the payment is credit on the beneficiary, right? But now the question is, you are also collecting money. You want to know when are you going to be paid, mm -hmm. and probably you also want to trace those payments in order to enrich your forecasting, or just to look at your collection processes. Right, so what we are doing now in, on the GPI for corporates roadmap is to integrate these inbound tracking capabilities in the, in the space of GPI, giving visibility not only to the corporate but also to the beneficiary bank on when uh, cross-border payments are coming to, to the collection accounts of the corporates. Eddie, we understand that Borealis, for Borealis, this is very important capability as you are participating in the design of the initiative yourselves. Uh, which, which use cases do you see? Well, I, I see especially, uh, like Sebastian uh, was saying, like inbound services. Now it's not only for paying, but as well the in which is incoming, what we would like as well, let's say, to take as, as a next step and, and to go further, actually. Uh, because I it's always a bit, okay, the cash is very important, and to, uh, certainly if you, if you know upfront, actually, for your forecasting, for your credit control, for example, but and as well for your accounting. So it's very important to, to, have, to have that visibility very in a, at an early stage, actually. And with the new initiatives, which will come quite soon, actually, we, we feel that there as well we can improve, actually, our working capital, and that's what it is all about, of course. Eddie Talks, uh, visibility. Peter, how important is that for you to have visibility on your oncoming payments? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely, uh, it's definitely gonna be big for us. Um, like Eddie mentioned, I think for, for R to R and for, for accounting and reconciliation processes, it's gonna be big, right? Because uh, the ability to get a free advice or get advance notice that a payment is coming, there's a couple things that'll be really beneficial. Um, one would be around getting all of the remittance data up front, right? Uh, because in the process, you could see, and you know, we've seen in the past that remittance data can get truncated along the way, right? So that poses a, a challenge from uh, 
from a reconciliation perspective. So I think that'll be beneficial. And then there's also cases where, you know, although payments are getting faster, you know, there are cases where you're dealing in multiple markets that a payment may be submitted right before cutoff time or may cross a time zone. So in those types of cases, it'll be great to have that insight on when that payment is coming so that, you know, we can be pre uh, prepared for it from a forecast and cash position management perspective. Seth, another service we heard about from two leading corporates, Booking.com and IATA, is cross-border request to pay service. Can you explain the concept and, and how this is going to help make our processes more efficient? Yeah, I think if we, if we look at Cybos, the key messages we heard about the, the, the conference is about request to pay. Seems to be a very uh, new hype, I would say, uh, regarding payments. We also see in Europe recently uh, basically, the banks in Europe are starting to develop a solution on request to pay as well. But all those solutions are typically linked to local markets or domestic markets. And what we see is there is a need for a cross-border solution enabling sellers to be able, when you send an invoice, to also send structured data to the, buyer, to the, to the buyer. And with that, the buyer, of course, as soon as the buyer receives these requests, they can accept, they can decline, they can even work on payment terms, accept early, pay cheaper, or pay later with a penalty, and then be able to track the whole process, not only the payment, but also the full invoice generation, invoice presentation, acceptance, and payment. So we believe it's a great initiative. We have developed a prototype that we're presenting at Cybos together with Booking.com, IATA, uh, Citibank, and BNP Paribas. We'll share that uh, at Cybos this week. And of course, we are very excited about it, hoping to, to be able to, to launch a service soon on that. And to round things up, I thought I'd throw it back to Peter and Eddie. Uh, gentlemen, what would be your message to the banks? Yes, I think my, uh, my message to the banks and as well as, as Swift here would be, let's, let's keep the collaboration going, right? So last year at Cybos, most of us had just went live and, and we saw over the course of a year how great of a collaboration it was. So let's keep the momentum going and let's also start bringing in the vendors from the onset so that we can start to accelerate timelines and, and kind of reap those benefits a little bit sooner. Eddie, would you back him up on that? Yeah, I really agree, and I confirm what Peter is saying, actually. So certainly that the banks are joining, actually, and keeping the momentum, because there is really momentum now, and continue with the new initiatives, actually, which Swift is now putting on, on the table, actually. So I think still a lot of work to be done, but uh, I think we, we took the right train, actually, and let's now, let's now move on uh, for the future. Well, we look forward to catching up with you all next year to check on progress made. Thank you very much for joining us on Cybos TV. Peter Klaus Landy, Eddie Jacques Mott, and Sebastian Rojas. Have a wonderful Cybos 2019, gents. Thank you, Thank you very much.